All right, Chicago, it's time for another season of hockey. Welcome back, everybody, to your franchise mode here on NHL 23 with, of course, the Chicago Blackhawks. And we are here in 2031, gearing up to go for the Cup once again. Uh, in the last video, we got the draft done, offseason all is set. The team is back pretty much the same, pretty similar. I think the forward group is literally the exact same, if I'm not mistaken. And we did make the decision to put De Silva on that second line. It does give them a plus five. Um, so the top two lines rocking a plus five. He did have more points than Caswell, um, only by a couple, I think. So he had 50, Caswell had 48, yes. So um, we'll see how that works out. We're going to watch uh, how our record's doing, how the stats are looking. We're going to go like month by month or a couple months in. We're not going to go too far in the sim um, and make decisions from there. And then, of course, on defense, we decided to stick with Sharp and Kasparitis on that top pair. See if they can bring the same magic as last year. And then we brought in Markov, who was a big uh, prospect for us. This is going to be his rookie year, as he did really, really, really well in uh, Russia there. 41 points in 54 games as a defenseman. And uh, we also signed Drew Hellison to fill up that bottom pair role. Uh, he fits in the best with everyone that we signed, so we stuck with him. And then in that, we elected to also keep UC Saros on a one-year deal. Um, hopefully he can shake off that shaky playoff run that he had last year and return to form of these two years right here. So we'll see if we can get that. And we also signed Trey Augustine for the backup role to see how he, uh, how can he do. And yeah, only one and a half mil is not bad. So if we need to, we can move him to uh, upgrade there. And then in the AHL, we just have our top guys, Bruce Holland, the big third overall pick this year that we acquired from the Canucks, is getting top line minutes there. Along with Bolling, another medium elite, um, third round pick a few years ago. He looks like he can be something. And Persaud, who's on the cusp of being in the NHL, but he just hasn't cracked the lineup yet. So, yeah, that's what we're looking for. Oh, and I guess I can show you the, the full AHL lines defensively. We got looking like this. We still have uh, Morgan Riley there, who we signed as depth a couple years ago, I believe. But uh, we just uh, we didn't need him. So, and I keep forgetting to check everything. And in goal, we have Galchenyuk and Cunningham. Nobody too special right there. So, yeah, we are pretty much ready. I went ahead and did all the power play lines uh, off camera just so we can, you know, have that all set up. And we will see how this team can simulate this year. So let us simulate up to the regular season. Now we do have, of course, another big offseason ahead of us. We have Lenny Haminaho on only a one-year deal, as well as Saros, uh, for that matter. And then we also have, I believe it's Will Sharp that is up this year. Um, oh, it's Pelica. We're on defenseman. So, yeah, Axel Sanding Pelica. He does not want extension, which is unfortunate. And he is looking for a ton of money. I have a feeling he's going to go crazy this season. And the worst part is we do not have RFA rights with him. So, I think we just missed it by a year. But, yeah, we do not have restricted free agency with him. Now, with Sharp, we will. He's actually only 24. That's a lot younger than I thought. But yeah, so him and Haminaho are both up this year. So we're definitely not going to be able to keep Saros. Now we have $28 million in extension money. So we can definitely afford to sign both of them. Even if he asks for like 16 mil, um, we can afford both of them. But yeah, like I said, Saros is going to be out. Um, no matter if he retires, if we trade him, um, or if we just don't resign him. He's going to be out as goaltender next year, it looks like. So... Um, now Pelica does have to earn that contract, so we'll see what happens. I have a feeling he's going to go crazy on a contract year. Uh, they tend to do that a lot. And hopefully, Haminaho's asking price does uh, drop a little bit. I mean, not that he isn't deserving of that kind of money, but if we can save, that would be huge. Yeah, I mean, Bedard had that huge year, and him and Catone were uh, benefits of that. And, I mean, they, they played their part, 88 points, and Catone had 93. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. 20 goals, 70 assists. That is a... Career year for him is too for him too. Let's not not be overshadowed by Bedard. Just a great season, and Catone has been great. Ever. He was our first big draft pick besides Bedard, obviously. But we kind of already, you know, he was already on the team technically. Um, but yeah, I mean, he has been great. He came up in twenty five, twenty six, and he just instantly started producing after his second year. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess he kind of had a rough year a couple years ago, but. Found his footing this year once again, obviously playing with Bedard and Haminaho. Those three seem to be the line in the league. So, yeah, we're going to see if that kind of magic continues. Hopefully, we have a great regular season, but more importantly, we have a great playoffs. Uh, assuming we make it, I would, you know, assume this team can. 
So let's go ahead and sim the first month and a half, see where we're at up to this game against Arizona. And yeah, uh, expecting big things from this team this year once again. But um, yeah, as I mentioned before, we have to begin the playoffs. We have to make it out of the second round. And um, yeah, yeah, hope for big things. We want to get back on top of that mountain. Um, Pittsburgh obviously holding the crown right now as we did beat them earlier in the month, 4-1. to one. But um, pretty solid start so far, 12-5-2. Um, let's see what we end up to this game against Arizona. Will we win against Minnesota? We do, 2-1. to one. So 14-5-2 to lead our division. Um, and we are tied for, or no, yeah, we're second in the NHL. These two are tied for first, uh, the Lightning and the Canes, that is. So, um, so yeah, kind of Bedard leading the way so far. 24 points in 21 games. We'll take a look at the full stats here. So there is Bedard. Yeah, that top line still doing great. Um, Leonov, Nature. Okay, so that middle six is not doing great. Um, Caswell, 10 points. De Silva, only 9 on that second line. That's not good enough. Um, Petit's got 10 on the third. He's got 8 goals, so that's something. But Nature's taking a big step back this year. Um, I guess he kind of has dropped off. He used to be a point-per-game guy, but um, not at that level anymore, it seems. So we'll have to consider a line change or two here. Um, that third line seems to be doing, well, at least uh, Nazar's doing good, plus five, eight points. And then the fourth line is doing pretty solid, uh, even players. Not, they haven't been too effective, so I guess I can't say that. Um, let's take a look defensively. Uh, Pelica, 14 points, as I expected, to go crazy. Kasparai, just second there, 13. That's good to see. Uh, Korchinski only with seven. Sharp with six. He's only an even player. And then Markov and Hellison are actually doing quite well. Plus seven for Hellison there. In that, UC Saros, ooh. Only a 900 and almost a three goals against. Trey Augustine in eight games is 7-0-1 with a 923 and a 197 goals against. That is also something to keep an eye on. Obviously, we're going to give Saros a bit of time to find his footing, but shit, man. We only signed him for one year, so um, there is that. All right, I'm going to try. That doesn't give me any chemistry. What about Caswell? A little bit. All right, we'll try Caswell on that second line again. If that doesn't work out, I'm going to bump up Petit um, because, you know, Leonov's doing solid. I have no reason to move him down. Natchez, I'm going to hope that he can... I mean, he's not doing horrible, but it's not great production. I'm just going to hope that maybe putting Caswell on that line will help a little bit. And then, yeah, top line's obviously staying the same. They seem to really carry the load for our offense half the time. And then, But yeah, goaltending is definitely something to watch. Uh, defensively, um, honestly, I'm going to give Korchinski top line minutes, hopefully get him going, playing with Kasparaitis, who's playing well this year again. And then Pelika, I'm not for you know, I'll move him up if I need to at some point. Put him with Sharp. Um, yeah, we'll just try that pairing. Just see, just see if that does anything. And we will go from there. All right, so let's get another month of simulation done. Go up to this game against Minnesota this time. So I think I've mentioned this in previous videos. Um, I mentioned I was in the process of moving, and that is actually official. So my moving date is six days from now. Today is Wednesday. I move in Tuesday. Um, so that is pretty big news. Uh, hopefully, at least I you know, project that that will help the content creation. Um, I don't have any issues right now, you know, making content. It's not really an interference. But, um, yeah, I think that will only help it. Um, I assume I am going to be working a lot, so there's that, but... Yeah, just more free time for this stuff to happen. Um, so yeah, hopefully that will help the content creation. Of course, you know, just other life shit too, you know, it's going to help. So um, yeah, there's that. But back to what we're doing. Connor Bedard, 41 points in 34 games. Uh, definitely very good, obviously. Uh, Catone, 39. And Lenny Haminaho, 36. So yeah, point per game, guys, on that top line. Leonov having a strong year, 29 points. Natchez back up to 24. And Catone up to 19 so that line seems to be doing a lot better uh third line petite on 17 nazar 12 and de silva uh 12 um we'll give that time we'll give that line a little bit more time it looks like they're doing okay uh, nazar's a plus nine so he's been really good and then fourth line go chase severson mcallister uh they have a decent amount of points but they're minus players so they haven't been crazy effective i'll have to watch that um 
yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. Defensively, Pelica, 23 points. Okay, I think I got to give him top line minutes. Uh, Kasparaitis, I mean, he's doing solid 19, but um, I think... Oh, yeah, Korchinski's up to a plus 18 now, too. Wow. And then Sharp, a 10 points, plus 12, doing okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to break... We had a great month that month, so I don't know if I want to break it up, but I might just swap the entire two tandems. And then, uh, or appearance, I should say. Goaltending, Saros... A 904 is slightly better, but Augustine continues um, to push for that starting spot. So we're going to have a big decision in goal to come the trade deadline. Because, I mean, I can't say I can trust Saros in the playoffs after last year. So, um, yeah, so we're going to move Sharp and Pelica up, get a plus five on that top line. And then we're going to have Korchinski and Kasparaitis on that second line just to see what that does. And then forward wise, I think I want to leave the same. And then we're definitely going to watch goalie. Um, come the trade deadline as i mentioned so um there is that and let's get it oh i actually i don't think i checked the bottom pair defenseman uh you guys probably obviously saw it but i didn't see what that was looking like get a quick look Markov, uh, pl uh even player five points plus nine for hellison so at least he's doing really well and you know Markov's a rookie so um, i'll give him a little bit of a break but I mean, they're, they're doing okay. They're not in the neg uh, in the negative or anything. So, yeah, let's continue on here. Um, how far is the trade deadline? Where are we at? January. So, we'll get... Do I want to sim both months? Um, we'll give it one more month. If, the, if this team is doing good, then I'll just continue. Um, which they look like they are. I mean, 26, 9, and 3 is obviously very, very good. But we'll see what we'll, we will see where we stand with that as we get a couple of big ones over Dallas. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. Um, Pile up a few losses here, but I'm not, you know, worried about it. We're scoring a lot, but it seems like we're letting in a lot of goals. Seven goals against, four goals against, uh, six goals against, five goals against. Yeah, that's probably where Saros is. Unless Augustine really dipped in his statistics, that's probably where Saros is hurting us. As let me. Let me just check goaltending real quick. Yeah, he's only on a 900. I think we might have to trade UC Saros. I mean, he's gotten us a, a shit ton of wins, but a not, he's almost, you know, a 900 is not good. And Augustine is playing amazing. You know, I have a feeling after the deadline he might trail off because just how this game works. But um, I don't have any reason to not start him. He's He's been the far superb goalie. Um, we'll take a look at the full stats here. Bedard... 53 points in 47 games, 26 goals. Um, yep, top line, all point per game, all plus 20, plus 30. Good to see. Uh, Leonov, 39 points, having a great year. Natchez up to 39, that's good. And Petit with 30, okay. Um, that is something to consider. Caswell, 27. De Silva, 21. Nazar, 16. And then, wow, fourth line's been atrocious. Negative 7, negative 9, and negative 8. So we're going to have to make um, some changes there, probably at the deadline. Uh, defensively, Pelika still leading the way with 33. Korchinski at 30. Kasparitis at 25. Sharp at 11. And then, wow, bottom pair actually. Plus 12 and plus 5. They're actually having a great year. Uh, Will Sharp, not really a crazy point getter. And he usually isn't. He's more of our defensive uh, rock there. But, you know, he's still plus 11. He's he's solid. So, yeah, let's... Uh, I might... You know what? I'm going to give this last month before the deadline to Petit on that second line. Just to try something out. Doesn't have any chemistry there, but, um, you know, we have the power forward, the playmaker, and the sniper combination. So, does this change anything at all? No. Um, I'm going to leave... I remember Leonov had a great year on the... Was it the right side? He might have played the left side this year. I'll leave him on the right side. Or the left side, excuse me. Um, just for now. And then, defensively, this second pair has been better. Plus 22. Um, do I just overload the first pair again? Korchinski and Pelika just go back to our roots right there. Um, we'll give that a month and then we'll see where we're at with that. So, and then, yeah, I gotta do something about this fourth line. Uh, how's our AHL team doing? Holland has, that actually looks good, 34 points, 39 games, beautiful. Uh, 17 for pole league and, uh, Persaud also 33, so that's good. Um... 30 there for Barry on the second line is solid. Actually, very good. 28 for Olsen. Yeah, that second line's been great. Um, they must be pretty decent with this kind of stats right here. 
Um, maybe not. Only 15 wins in 26 games. 15, 8, and 2. Okay, that's not bad. And then 7, 6, and 1. They're probably... Uh, I mean, I can just check right here, but they're probably fighting for a playoff spot right now, I would assume. Yeah. Yep, so they are tied for third in their division there. Um, them and the Wild are tied in points uh, with the exact same record as well, so that is uh, pretty interesting. Maybe they can actually go on a run because since we've been on this franchise, they haven't really done much. I know we haven't paid too much attention, but... And one other thing I do want to check here is the contract. So, of course, I mean, Aho doesn't want an extension either. Um, he's asking for a little cheaper, 14 mil, but yeah, we might have to sign him to something like that. Yeah, I mean, he's still producing at that kind of rate, so I mean, I understand why he's asking for that kind of money, but yeah. Um, and then Pelica, what's he at? He's, okay, he's dropped a little bit, honestly. Um, three-year deal at 11 mil. Honestly, that's not bad. If he accepts 11, five over three, I think... I think I can do that. Um, yeah, I'm going to offer him that. Because I think that's around the cheapest we'll get him. Uh, you could argue he could drop again, but with, you know, he's having another great season. So um, hopefully that doesn't, you know, fuck him up either. But yeah, I think we're almost certain that we're going to trade Saros. Like, he just is not doing it. And Augustine's been great. So yeah. So let's sim up to the trade deadline. Hopefully Pelica does accept that extension. And we'll have him for the next three years as well. Yeah, and with the defensive market in this game too, like, these guys ask for crazy money after a while. And he does resign. All right, so Pelica is signed. We don't have to worry about him. And so that is good. So, yeah, uh, continuing the sim here, we're looking pretty solid here in the month of February. Getting up to the deadline, of course. And there is where we stand at the deadline. Last game against Washington here before the deadline officially hits. Let's just uh, get that game over the way, or out of the way, excuse me. First period, they're winning 2-1. to one. Second period, nothing. Third period, we tie it up. Caswell, overtime, and we win it. Uh, Sergei Markov, the rookie, with the overtime winner to take that one 3-2. to two. So that's good to see. And Saros actually having a good game before the end of the deadline, trying to... Uh, keep his spot on this team. So 40-16-5, and five, which puts us first in the NHL. I will definitely take that. Um, at the deadline here, Connor Bedard, 72 points in 61 games. Having another great season, of course. Good to see. So let's take a look. And yeah, he's just head and shoulders above everyone. It's crazy. Um, Katone, 58, and Haminaho, 57. Uh, very good as well. And they're all plus 30s, pretty much. Uh, Nate Chess, 49 points. Leona, 47 and Petit 37, so they slowed down a little bit with Petit on that line, but um, the goal scoring is there. 20 goals for Petit, 25 for Leonov, and almost, basically 20 for Natchez. And then Casual on, <coughs> excuse me, Casual on 36, De Silva on 27, Nazar 22. And then fourth line, I think they've done a little bit better since last time, but they still have not been great. Um, all in the minuses there. Defensively, we have Pelica on 45, again, you know, earning that contract money that we just extended him to. Korchinski, 36. Uh, Cast price, 28. So not crazy scoring for the defenseman, which is fine. Um, they're all in the pluses pretty heavily, so that's good. And even that bottom pair is doing good. So um, just a solid defensive core this year, which I will definitely take. I don't need no 100-point defenseman just to get two points in the playoffs or some shit like that. So um, I'll definitely take that. And then Saros and, man, Augustine is even gotten even better 932 um i think he just has to be the starter you know not a good sample size maybe but saros has had plenty of sample size and he hasn't been great so if it's not because of augustine's play but more of of saros's lack of play um i think we have to make a move so i think i'm gonna put caswell on that second line again um i know petite has te you know he's been doing better technically but um, I think Caswell on that second line had better production, or the whole second line had better production with Caswell on that line. So I think this is the forward core we're going to stick with going into the playoffs. And honestly, defensively, it might be the same. Um, it's just been a solid defensive core this year, so we will take that. But yeah, I think in goal, I think that Saros just might have played his last game against the Capitals there. And, you know, he had a good game, so I'll give him that. But we'll give him his flowers while we can. He was instrumental to our cup win. 
but um, we need to upgrade on that fourth line. We need a better fourth liner. Um, I'm thinking either Gauthier or because Severson has to play. He's like a you know he's only 22. He's been you know he's one of our top prospects or well not really a prospect but you know one of our top young guys. And then McAllister, he does have that X factor. But yeah, I mean, they just haven't been great. Although, Severson honestly does not. So maybe I'll uh, I'll have him benched. He can be a playoff replacement if we need him. But we need to upgrade on that fourth line no matter where it is. And then everywhere else we're good. I mean, defensively we've been great. And then just, you know, getting a backup goalie for Augustine or maybe a different starter or something like that. But we'll see what's available here at the deadline as we will jump right into that right now. And let's see here. So we have uh, Uri Slavkovsky is available. The uh, first overall pick back in 2022. He's having a solid season there. But um, for $11 million in that trade value, I don't think so. Uh, Mitch Marner is out there. Nico Heischer. Uh, Andre Smirnoff is also out there. Uh, there is a goalie right here, Liv Harnstam, but um, he is, he's got too much term. Um, there's a goalie from Toronto here. He's having a good season. Um, One-year deal. He doesn't have a crazy amount of trade value either, it doesn't look like. Um, Cole Perfetti out there. Uh, okay, let's just look at goalies real quick just to see. So um, This guy from Toronto is looking like the option right now for goaltending. Um, Nathan McKinnon is out there. Um, that would be a crazy pickup for like the third line and then just bump somebody down. That would, I mean, he's only, he's 36 on an expiring deal. Shit. I, I don't know if we'll have the cap for that, but unless we trade our goalie, unless no Toronto trades Mitch Marner to Tampa Bay for a first round pick and Schaefer. That is a big move over there in Tampa. On um, the Zuri Zykov of the Montreal Canadiens on an ELC, mind you, um, or at least, you know, only 840,000. A 917 for him in 52 games. He's been great despite doesn't look like Montreal has. So he might actually be the option because what is the Toronto guy making? Um, as Boston makes a move, he's making, yeah, five mil. So that would save us a lot of money. A first, second, uh, a couple of guys in exchange to Seattle in exchange for Patrick Line and Ferravari. So Patrick Line off the market. Um, that is a lot to give up for him, but they have a lot of faith in him. So there is that. And all these guys have already been traded. So yeah, it looks like you know the trade. The trades are active right now, so we might have to like quickly make some decisions here. Um, yeah, Ottawa's making the trade. Okay, um, I say let's target the guy from Montreal as a goalie. I know I said I wanted to give Augustine the net, but we can have kind of a two tandem here with Zykov, and he. He doesn't cost a lot. So, Saros, um, Montreal would be over the league minimum, okay, or maximum. That might hurt us a bit because we might want that cap space to try to go after a guy like Nathan McKinnon. But is there anybody? Okay, well, I do need a fourth liner. Well, no, because I'm getting McKinnon. Shit. Um, okay, what's the cheapest guy you can give me? Like, even like, I don't want somebody with crazy value. But, um, this guy for two mil, is that, okay. So we can get a depth defenseman, which I don't really need. And honestly, I'd rather get different assets. Shit, man, this is hard. Um, but yeah, that money would come off. Let me see somebody else. Um, oh, I'm on the wrong side, okay. So that guy was two million. All these guys have trade value, though. But, I mean, I guess, you know, we can just pick up a different prospect. Um, there's Hobbs. He's asking for a lot. Or that's a lot of trade value. He's got 30 points this year, so I see why. But, um... Man, I don't... I mean, maybe we can get some defensive depth that I don't really need, but... Um... Does this guy count towards the Cav? I didn't think so. Alright, um... There's Prince here. Zane Prince, power forward. is playing down there in the Rocket, but he's not... I mean, he's nothing crazy. Vasiliev... It's just guys with too much trade value. So it would be this this guy right here. Um, yeah, because after that, it's just ridiculous. It's 1.4. Okay, 1.4 is enough. But the only thing is, it's just... 
I mean, if that goes through on itself, I don't want to give up any more assets. Let's see if that goes through for Zykov and Hobbs. Yeah, that doesn't shit. Um, and them not having the cap space, unless I just want to retain on Saros, like, very minimally. How much would I have to retain on him? Probably have to be at least a mil. Yep, okay, let's, let's do doubt and pennies and dimes right here. Or nickel, nickel and dimes is the uh, the phrase, I believe. Alright, so I think it's 600k that we have to retain. Okay, I, I can do that. And then we'll pick up Zykov. And... I don't know if they have anyone outright that I want to acquire. No. So let's get um, a few draft picks. Let's get a third and a fourth from next year if we can. So uh, it's going to be Saros for Zykov. And a third and a fourth. Will that go through? No. How about just for Zykov and a third? Will that go through? No. Okay. How about the fourth then? No. Okay. Well, fuck you then. Uh, a fifth and a sixth. How about that? A little bit of... Give me a little bit of draft depth. No? Okay, just a fifth. We might have to just do one for one. Damn. Okay. Um, but it says it has a lot of value in favor. I don't know why it's doing that. This is really just two six. I'm really kind of wasting my time here. Just one six. There we go. So, Saros, we replace uh, just outright. And then, okay, McKinnon is still out here. I want to target Nathan McKinnon. He's got X-Factors... Um, if they can retain 50% on them would be great just to make sure I have the cap space But how much cap space do I have four million? Yeah, so we're gonna need them to retain 50% As Seattle makes a trade um, Doesn't involve McKinnon's so that's good Doesn't seem to boost up his value in insane So is there anybody that they want that I can give up? Uh, Klepis definitely not but Yeah, some of these guys like Rolison. He hasn't done much. I can give up him and probably Smirnoff as well. Honestly, they haven't done uh, too much. Oh, Smirnoff doing okay. I'll hit. Oh, he's mean and Malik. Oh shit, these guys are mean and Malik. I thought they were top six. Okay. Um, Bolig. Yeah, he isn't doing shit. He's playing with what's his name? Uh, Bruce. Uh, what the hell's his name? Is he on the trade block here? No. Um, the guy we just drafted. You. Why? Bruce Holland. That's right. Um, and he isn't really doing nothing, so Bully can be a part of this deal. And then, do I want to give up one of the fourth line guys? Let me see what, what's going on here. Because I said it might be Severson coming out, and he's still a young player though, so um, I'll hang on to him. But let's add in Bullig. That honestly might cover that. And I'm actually going to safety net it. So let me get a third and a fourth just theoretically. So yeah. Bolig, who has a lot of potential, and, you know, he just hasn't produced, though. I haven't seen any production from him. Yeah, only 12. Yeah, he's got to go. He's shit. All right, Bolig for McKinnon, a third and a fourth. That isn't good. How about for McKinnon, and a third? Nope, just a touch. Okay, so we'll actually be able to get a couple of draft picks maybe here for him. A fourth and a fifth, no. And just a fourth should do it. There we go. We acquire Nathan McKinnon on half retained. So another Hall of Fame talent joins this team. As uh, we saw that he was having a great season, so let's take a look at the full the full stats here. So yeah, he's got full X-Factors. Uh, he fits in on that second line. Okay, and honestly, that wouldn't be a bad fit on the right side to play with uh, Leonov and Natchez. We haven't really found our, our groove there on the second line. So we'll have, we'll be fully loaded on that third line. Honestly, I think... Nazar might be that fourth line guy as much even though he's played great just based off of who I need to give ice time to um, Because let me look at forwards here uh, No, I don't want centers forwards Like Petit has been good enough to earn at least a third line role obviously uh, De Silva uh, Not crazy production 27. What's uh, Caswell at? Yeah, he's at 36, so he's good on that third line, at least. And then... Where is he? Nazar is at... I can't click on him. He's at 22, so yeah. I think he has to... Just based on who I have to give uh, ice time to. And he doesn't fit... What does everyone fit on that fourth line? Nothing crazy. Where is De Silva? What does he fit? Uh, he, f he fits really well on that fourth line. I'm really... Anywhere he does, but we'll, we'll have to see when we get there. But Nathan McKinnon, 
officially a Chicago Blackhawk. Um, that is not somebody I expected to get in this franchise mode. But, um, yeah, I mean, at this stage, it's uh, it's definitely a possibility, and we made that happen. So that is our big deadline pickup. Obviously, well, Zykov is as well. So Yuri Zykov, um, we're putting a lot of faith in. Um, he's been great, though, in his, all of his NHL appearances. So, um, or at least when he's had, you know, enough games. So he has been very solid. How about in the playoffs? Yeah. I mean, he only had one game this game. But, yeah, last this was last year, right? Yeah. So he went to seven games and played pretty well. So we will take that. Now, he is expiring this year, so we have to watch that. In, in case we do want to re-sign him, we also have Augustine here that as an option so there's our goaltender situation and then we have rasmussen actually coming up ernesto rasmussen i could have actually signed him for the ahl i wasn't even thinking but um yeah he should be up next year at least for the ahl and i don't think i want to make any other moves at this deadline so um we made our big trades and we are all set now i'm gonna have to go ahead and change all the lines here because we did make roster moves see a few big trades going on there we saw the marner trade uh Keandre miller and P cole perfetti were swapped um went up and getting a second and a third in that deal as well uh christian dvorak is on waivers uh don't need him and all right so there we are let's go ahead and set these lines up um I'll leave the first line how they were all right second line this is going to be so we know these two are going to be there. Now, what's McKinnon on that second line? He's a plus five. And then, yeah, I would say this is, I mean, you know, Caswell isn't a great face-off guy, but he's supposed to be a center, you know, as a secondary position. So there is that. Um, I'm honestly I'm honestly fine with that. I am honestly fine with that. And then it kicks out uh, McAllister because he is the center. Now, what if I put in, just as theoretically, what, what if I put McAllister back in on the left side? That's give it a plus two. So, yeah, I think I will keep him there. And then I know Nazar probably has better face-offs, yeah. So, we'll put that as our fourth line. And then defensively, um, we had these two together. And Markov's up to 82, which is good to see. Yep, that looks like our defensive core. And then Engel, Zykov, and Augustine. So beautiful. And then power play. <sighs> Fucking I hate this shit that they keep putting Natchez on that first line center, which makes no sense, but And then this is where Leonov is gonna go. Oh, uh, there he is. And then second line. We could put McKinnon as center. What's Natchez's face off? He's 81, okay. So he's center. If it'll let me Come on, game. There we go. Um, Sharp is not a point getter. Why is... This thing is so fucking broken. Oh my god, let me get out of this real quick. Holy shit. <laughs> like, I, I guess I'm too fast for this game. I don't know why I can't keep up. Keep up. Alright, Natchez, center. McKinnon's good right there. Petit is good. And then... Um, Ron defenseman. We'll put Korchinski in there. And then, do I want to Silva? Who else would I have? Um, Lenny's already on the top one. These guys are already in. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that would be the, the guy right there. And then, God, they have to stop with this shit, man. I put Bedard up here. Pelica can honestly be the first. Was he in the power play at all in this one? Okay, he's top line, good. And then instead of Casparitis, let me get probably Katone, honestly, just keep that top line together. All on the power play, and then we'll have um, McKinnon. Nope, Nate Chat's gonna be the center with McKinnon and Leonoff, I would think. Put those two there. You have the two playmakers. Is he a playmaker in this? Yeah, he's a playmaker. And then put the sniper, Timothy Leonoff, in there with Korchinski at the point. There we go. All right, rest can fill out how they want. Um, and we are all set. So this is going to be the team going into the playoffs more than likely. So let us get that simulation done. And then do I want to move down? 
Uh, Severson for the AHL, just to give them a little bit of a boost. Um, okay, Bruce Holland's not playing third line. Yeah, these guys are all having good lines. I might just let them play together. And then, yeah. Oh, holy shit. Moen's actually having a great year. He doesn't need to be that low. So we'll put Harrison down. He's done good too, though. Is there a way I can get... Um, Okay, those three right there. Yeah, and he's the best face-off guy. And then put Greer there. And that is good with me, honestly. So AHL team is all set up. Hopefully they can make a make the playoffs and make a run there. But we are more concerned, of course, with our NHL team. So let's uh, let's get the rest of the simulation done for this season, and then we will look to see who we. I mean, we're gonna make the playoffs we're already first in the NHL, but we will look to see who we face in the first round. Hopefully, uh, this will be a big test for our goaltending tandem as well to see if McKinnon fits in on that second line. And so far, it has been very good. We've only had one loss. Of course, <laughs> jinxed it right away. And we lose two in a row there. Three in a row. Um, which is probably the biggest losing streak we've had all season. But we get back on our feet here. 9 nothing win against Colorado. Holy shit. And, all right, back-to-back 9 -back nothing shutouts is crazy. That That is the... That might be the wildest two-game stretch in NHL history. 9 nothing twice. And we end the season 56-20-6, which is another President's Trophy to add to our collection. 118 points, by far the best in the NHL by 7. The uh, the Sabres, 111 there. Do they still have Dabrinkit? I'm honestly curious. Just as a side thing here. Um, they do not. So he was signed... By somebody else in free agency, but yeah, they actually they have a really really good team here. Um, top six is very well rounded. Bottom six is good, and UPL and Georgi have the tandem there. So, um, and yeah, look at this depth they have. Even scratched a few good players. So, yeah, they would have been deserving of it any other year. But of course, we dominate once again. Connor Bedard dominant once again. Ninety four points. In 82 regular season games, 44 goals. Um, yeah, just 807 uh, points in 738 games, 8, 395 goals. So he will hit the 400 mark next year. But yeah, he is uh, adding to his Hall of Fame. Already, he's only he's already a Hall of Famer. He's got an MVP, Art Ross, Stanley Cup. Should have been the Conn Smythe, but um, you know he's he's just he's just you know already. Four 50 goal seasons, one of them being a 60 goal season. I mean, he's just, you know, he's got a, a couple rockets, I think. Just a, already a great resume for Connor Bedard here in Chicago. Uh, but yeah, not to be outshadowed again is his line mates, Haminaho and Catone, 77 points, both respectively, almost 30 goals for both of them. McKinnon, 73 points. Uh, for us, he had 19 points in 21 games. Uh, he was a minus two, though, which is interesting, but. Had the points there. Nate has 71 points. So he's back on that 70-point mark after only getting 60-something the last two years. So that's good to see. And then Leonov, 36 goals, 66 points. Um, the points weren't quite there from last year, but back up to almost 40 goals, which is great to see. Uh, Petit, 52 goals, a great season from him. Um, honestly, a breakout year. He might make the second line next year if he gets that jump. And then, you know, to replace McKinnon on that second line. Kazwan 44 is solid. He's kind of like a two-way guy for us. Um, I know he is a playmaker, but he has definitely been like a two-way guy. He's like a 40, 50-point guy, but... Um, oh, yeah. Look at, look at those takeaways to give giveaway ratios, and he hits. Um, not as much this year, but usually he hits. Yeah. He's kind of just like a force uh, for checking. And speaking of that is De Silva, who was actually the two-way forward with all the X-Factors. So, uh, 40 points for him which is a bit of a drop-off from last season, only a plus five. So don't know if he'll reach that top six forward role. And that contract isn't looking as good as it was when we signed him. So we'll see what happens there. Nazar 31, he's just been a trusty middle six guy, bottom six guy. Um, very solid. He's kind of been the one guy that we've kept too. Um, him and Korchinski, obviously, and Bedard. But yeah, he's a Chicago original, drafted before... He, even uh, we started here. And yeah, he's been just very solid for us since he's come up. And then, um, 
Severson. Uh, okay, so yeah, that fourth line became plus players once Nazar came down there. So that definitely helped all of them around 30 points as well, which is good to see. Defensively, Pelika 56 leading the way, plus 31. Yeah, him and Korchinski are just the pair. Um, those two having a great season once again. Kasparitis, 37 points. Good to see. He is actually down to low four as potential, but it's good to see he gets some production now. Um, definitely, you know, his breakout year was last year, so a bit of a drop-off, but hopefully he'll stay around that top four defenseman, like, you know, an 85, 86 overall. Uh, Markov actually was 16 on the bottom pair, a plus 22, a great rookie year for Sergei Markov as uh, Wolf Sharp 14 there and Hellison, all of our defensemen at least plus 20, which is great. So a very good season defensively for us. And then Zykov ended with a 919 with us. He had, oh, he had a 919, okay. In 20 games, he was 15, 4, and 1. So that makes me feel good about that. And then Trey Augustine was incredible this year. 939 save percentage, 162 goals against. Uh, 9, 3, and 0 oh in his 14 appearances this year. So, uh, well, 9, 3, and 2, I guess. Um, but yeah, he was great. So overall, great year for the team. Of course, we made, uh, or we won the President's Trophy once again. And in terms of the entire league, uh, Tage Thompson leading the way. Um, 107 points, 47 goals. And it looks like his, yeah, look at look at his top line for Buffalo. They are scary this year. They are definitely going to be a force. Um, I would bet if we make the finals, that's probably going to be our matchup right there. As I assume Steos, yeah, he led the, led the league in goals, 62. Um, only two guys cracking 50 this year with him and Robertson. But yeah, 100 points for all three of the guys in Buffalo. As you can see, Bedard right there. He is, what, sixth? Yep, sixth in scoring um, this year, so that's good to see. And then defensively leading the way was Adam Fox on Vancouver. Uh, 77 points, 61 assi assists, which is incredible. Uh, goal 10, or goals. Uh, Moser for Nashville is definitely an odd one. Uh, 17 goals for him. Uh, let's see who led in plus minus, so we should be up there. But yeah, Korchinski led with plus minus. So if he if he had like... Well, where's Pelica? He had the most points, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Yeah. 31 if one of those two had like 10 or 15 more points they might be in the running just based off plus minus but i think they have to give it to adam fox 77 points they might give it to brant clark just because he's a plus 32 but it's going to be one of these two it's definitely going to be one of those two and then annette carter hart with boston 41 wins uh Zykoff ended with 40 as as a whole and then save percentage uh among starters carter hart and Zykov are pretty much the two-man race for, uh, I don't know why he's above Zykov. Well, I guess it's probably only showing us, right? Yeah, so he probably had a 918, obviously, uh, combined, or maybe 917. And that's where he's grouped in. So um, it's going to be either Zykov or Hart for the Vesna. I would probably say Hart by a slight advantage, but I don't know. Zykov's goals against is way down there, though, compared to Hart. So we'll see what that is looking like. There is the rookie race. Uh, for forwards, and then was there any good goalies? Not, not really. None of them really started. So there is across the entire league. Uh, once again, President's Trophy winners of the regular season, but it won't matter if we don't do anything in the playoffs. So we will see what happens there in the next episode. But thank you guys for watching this. This is the 30th episode of the series. So another milestone for this series. Hopefully the 31st results in another Stanley Cup. But as far as this one goes, this will be all. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, go check out my MLB series that I'm doing. Uh, we're hopefully going to get moved up to the MLB soon. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, you guys take care.